Oh, you can start it if she starts talking. Just Parents here. don't want to change love. And the children can't change it. I'm afraid I it gets to be survival of the fittest in this way. We have no budgets and no concern about what comes into our kids. And then we wonder why they don't like food. We dumb down their palates. So these people will be tossed aside early and figuratively by the system. Kids are getting this idea ingrained in them that malnutrition doesn't count and it doesn't really matter. Because if it really matter, the school nutrition program would provide them with really high quality food every day. <laughs> we have to get back to eating healthy. my child's school it would reverse everything I did over summer trying to teach them how to be healthy and active and it would just kind of counteract everything that I'm trying to teach them exactly does anyone else feel the same yeah I feel like it's kind of sabotaging our idea of healthy eating almost it's like it contradicts everything that we believe in and we're teaching our kids and our kids are okay we'll do this but when you go to school it's opposite so oh, I'm sorry I was like using the clicker okay how would you guys, my second question is, how would you guys um, go about and maybe changing um, the school systems? What would you guys do? Any Hire a dietitian. Hire a dietitian to work with? Yeah. What are some cons to that though, you think? The expense. Yes, the expense. Yeah. Yes. Um, I would pack my child's lunch. Yes, pack your child's lunch. Now with the busy schedule, you think a lot of parents would be willing to do that? <laughs> Teach your kids to pack their own. That's a very good idea, I think so. Teaching your kids. So, I am gonna go forward. Sorry, there's, can you use this? So your thoughts, okay, your tactics. Um, some of the excuses. What do you think some of the excuses that schools have for serving this food? That, yeah. Well, they manipulate it. So they'll say that a piece of sauce is a vegetable, mm -hmm. or so they, they they meet the recommendations, but they kind of twist it so that yeah. the meeting is. Meeting the bare minimum. The bare minimum. Yeah. It's also really cheap, so that kind of food. Yes. That's a lot of the arguments that people have. All right. So this is a lot of the concerns that a lot of parents have. And fortunately, our voice has been heard. And this year, they've actually um, had some new regulations done to our school system. So under the... So under the Health Hunger Act of 2012, with the help of Michelle Obama, our first lady, we actually started some new regulations under the um, Department of Agriculture. And it's to help fight against oh, child obesity, and some of the new regulations include limiting calories. Um, elementary schools now limit the students to um, only con consume 650 calories. For middle schoolers it's only 700 and for high school kids it's only up to 850 and they are now required to take a fruit and a serving of vegetable before it was just optional they can go on without it now they don't take a fruit or vegetable they actually get charged more for um, their, their food and then now they're actually incorporating home right into their bread who knew right so you guys can see that there has been some changes, but with changes, there's always some new concerns that rises. And it's not a perfect system. And with the new regulations, these are some of the concerns that has been talked about um, throughout the, since it was launched back in uh, September. So kids are complaining that it's tasteless. They're throwing away more food. They're seeing um, an increase in the amount of food that's in the trash can because people are not, the kids aren't eating their fruits and vegetables. They think it's tasteless. So a lot of the packaged um, fruit cups, they're thrown away in the trash, not opened. So there's a lot more waste of like the food. So that would, you know, contribute to the expenses even more. We're trying to make a difference, but yet it's causing the schools more money. And um, they're unsatisfied because of the amount of calories, they're going hungry. 
Um, especially high school kids who are athletes, they're only getting that 850 calories. And as you guys know, active, if you're active, you burn up to what, 3,000 calories? So these athletes in high schools are feeling like, oh my gosh, with these limitations on calories, I'm not getting the energy to go, you know, to get to practice even. And so these are some of the concerns that parents have. And my question to you guys <laughs> is, how do you guys feel about the new regulations? Do you think it's good, it's bad? Any thoughts? Yeah. Um, I don't like the fact that they're limiting the calories. I think um, it shouldn't be calories that they're limiting. I think it should be like food sources that they should be more specific on. Mm -hmm. Because um, like they said in the video, that some of the kids are only getting food from schools. You know, at home they don't have like adequate resources to get the food. So I think that they should, um, you know, schools are incorporating like breakfasts and lunches so that the kids can get the food. I don't think they should limit them to like under 800 calories if that's their only source of food. That's good. I saw another hand over here. I was just going to say, I think that by like forcing kids to take a serving of fruit and vegetables, it's kind of, I mean, they could, instead of forcing people to take food that they're not going to eat, maybe make it optional, but um, increase the quality of all the rest of the food that you're serving so that it's not empty calories that the kids are getting. And that's probably why they're hungry later is because it's like they're eating pizza and it's not something that's going to um, satiate them for the rest of the day. And then the, two hours later, they're just going to be hungry again. So what kind of food sources do you guys think they can maybe incorporate in like Subway sandwiches, like bigger amounts of food with vegetables in it, a larger slice of whole grain bread so it doesn't digest as quickly as pasta would or pizza dough. So maybe something like a subway method. Yeah, and of course they have to go and you know meet the budget and maybe work with a dietitian or something to incorporate all of that. Um, also, how so? Yeah, we talked about the changes in the tweak. And um, what about the accommodation for the high school athletes? Like, do you guys think that they should bring their own snacks or? I think if you are an athlete, you're gonna know what your needs are. I mean, the younger athletes might not, hopefully their parents can help them, but when you're an athlete 15 and older, you kind of know what you need, you know your sport, you know if you need to bring extra beer, if you need to bring gels, if you need to bring, you know, energy beans, things like that, if you're a runner or whatever, I think you get used to knowing what you need to eat, and I hope they would pack these things in their bags. Yeah, that's a very that's a very very good point. Yeah. And I personally feel like it's a good start. There are some flaws to it, but I think it's for one step closer towards wanting to fix this problem. And I think um, a lot of people have these concerns because maybe it's a new change and they don't know if there are going to be any adjustments to it. But I think as it goes on, it just shows that our voice is heard, and I think they're actually are taking actions and. Parents have the support of schools now. Before it was just parents on their own. They feel like, oh my gosh, like if I'm not getting support, how is this gonna work? But now that we have like support of the first lady in the schools, it's, it's a good thing. And I think we should still stay motivated to just continue fighting against child obesity. And I really want to thank you all for being here and um, joining me in this discussion. I hope you guys um, continue to be proactive parents. Have a good one, guys. Thanks.